Okay. So today we will define what is a distributional derivative, and then we will do some exercises on distributional derivatives. So let omega, as usual, be an open subset over n. Let t be a distribution. And let i be an index between 1 and n. OK, so we give the following definition. Uh, we define the t over the xi as follows. For any by definition, So we give the following definition. For any test function phi, this object here, tested against phi, is by definition t, with the minus in front, uh, tested again this, against this, this uh, derivative, partial derivative. Okay? So it is clear that uh, the phi over the xi is again an element of the omega. Therefore, the right-hand side is well-defined. Uh, and uh, uh, also, it is clear that this is a distribution. How can we check that this is a, so the, the, the remark. Is a distribution. Hmm? How can we check this? So do you remember the criterion for any k compact set contained in omega? There exist two constants and k. Uh, such that there is no space enough, sorry, less than or equal. This was the criterion, right? Hmm? Therefore, hmm? and this so this is if and only if t is a distribution. Okay, remember this. Therefore, now if we do if we now compute this. Then we use the definition but t was a distribution, so there were some k some m k and some small m k such that this holds, so this is less than or equal than m k sup d. OK, 
okay. Okay, so this is So it is enough to take uh, mk plus 1 so that uh, this shows that the criterion holds with mk, mk plus 1 in place of mk. Therefore, this is still a distribution. In addition, by this simple computation, we have that if the order of t is finite, then the order of dt over dxi is less than t over dt plus 1. OK, so this is a distribution. So in this sense, you can differentiate a lot of things. And uh, so the, today, we want essentially to make exercise on this. Okay. So first of all, one has to, to see whether this is a good definition. So we have the following theorem. So if you see one, uh, then so let, let me recall maybe uh, the notation. So do you, you remember who is TU? Uh, everybody remembers? OK. OK. So then the TU over the xi is equal to T TU over the xi. So with some. Uh, uh, abusing a little bit the notation, well, you, one can usually write uh, something like this with some abuse of notation. But this is simply to say that if you have a function u, of course, a function u in this class is in L1 log. Okay, so this is this T u is well defined. And therefore, whenever the function is smooth, uh, distributional derivatives are nothing else than standard derivative, in this sense, in the prime. So coincidence means that as soon as your object is smooth, then your weak derivatives actually is the strong derivative. You, you, you want to differentiate a lot of things, but for smooth objects, your operation coincides with the old one. So this is the first, uh, the first property that you have to check in order to give a good definition. If you want to generalize derivatives to something which is not smooth, you have to ensure that if it is smooth, then you have the classical derivative. Okay? In this sense, I, I, I write here coincidence. So let us see the proof. What does it mean that these are equals in the sense of the prime? It means that for any point phi, they are equal. So take a test function phi and consider d over the xi of phi. So this is by definition u of the phi over the xi. This is our definition. Yes? Hmm? Uh, which is the question? Sorry? Uh, this? Uh, five in D? Test? 
So the, the omega was, remember, the omega was test functions with the topology that I wrote last time. Conver not with topology, with the convergence that I, that I wrote last time. Okay, just, this is just a symbol. On the other hand, when I write an inequality in this sense, I exactly mean that for any phi, this against phi is equal to this against phi. This is the meaning of this. Oh, which was the question, sorry? Is it okay? okay. So now, uh, by definition, by the previous definition, this is equal to this. Now let me recall who is Tu. So Tu against Psi, if Psi is a test, uh, is the integral of Psi U, in the sense of Lebesgue, for any test Psi. OK? The fourth, if I now apply this remark, this definition, with Psi replaced by this, then the right hand side is exactly equal to minus the integral over omega of u, uh, sorry, the phi over the xi times u dx. Okay? Do we agree? So now I integrate by parts. Now I can integrate by parts. Because for the Lebesgue measure, for the Lebesgue integral, I have integration by parts. So this is actually equal to, now I put the derivative on u, and I have no boundary contributions, huh? because u is compactly supported. So I have phi du over the xi dx. Okay, and the minus cancels with this minus. And what is this, if you remember, is exact. Now, it is clear that the u over the xi is in L1 log, because this is continuous. Therefore, the, the, this object is well defined, and therefore this is nothing else. Phi. So as you see, for any test phi, this distribution is equal to this distribution, which is exactly the meaning of the equality that we want to show. OK? And of course, once you have learned to differentiate once, you can differentiate twice, three times, and so on. You can make. Uh, you can inductively define all derivatives in the sense of distributions. Okay. So we know from this theorem we know that there is nothing new if u is C1. Now it is interesting to compute derivatives when u is not C1. But still uh, uh, it admits a, a derivative in the sense of distributions. So, uh, exercise. So let H be equal to the heavy side function, which is by definition the following H of X is equal to zero if less is, is less than 0, and 1 if x is larger than 0. OK. With this uh, symbol 1, I in denote the characteristic function of, this, of the half line, of the right half line. So 1 on the right half line and 0 else. OK, just the characteristic function. Maybe, maybe measure theory somebody. Uh, right, uh, this, well, it's just a notation. Characteristic. So uh, this is the value 1 
this is the value 0. OK? OK, then we can actually, it is interesting to know that this, OK, this is in L1 lock. Um, zero? Huh? No, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, the value, so, so this is a Lebesgue theory. Uh, it doesn't matter the value that you assign at one point. You could put any, any value you want at, in zero. So this is just almost everywhere defined as a function of L1 lock. Okay? So you have to remember that now in functional analysis we have uh, equivalence classes of functions with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Okay, so H is defined at all points except one. In particular, it is almost everywhere defined, and it is clearly in L1 lock. Uh, it is interesting to remark then, then sorry, my, my notation. What does it mean, this? Well, this means, okay, this is again uh, my small abuse of notation. So if you want to, re to be really, really rigorous, uh, I don't take into account this and just write that the distribution associated to H derivative, if you want. Okay. Then this uh, is actually ca can be differentiated, but its derivative is not an L1 law, is not represented, is a distribution, delta Dirac, Dirac delta at the origin. Huh? is a distribution and is, um, is, not, is not represented by an L1 log function. So this is an extremely interesting result. So we learn how to differentiate these continuous functions. Hmm? Of course, we cannot do this pointwise. It is clear that this cannot be done. But <clears throat> now, now we will prove this. Okay, so take so this is this equality holds in in the prime. Okay, so what do we do? Well, take any test, and then write this. We have to, to compute this, but this by definition is equal to minus th applied to phi prime. This is our uh, initial definition. th is represented, is in L1 lock, so, so, sorry, h is in L1 lock, so we have an integral representation of this, uh, this distribution, which is just equal the integral of h phi prime dx. Hmm? But now you remember who is h. So actually this integral is not on the wall of r, but just only on the right half line, because h is 0 on the left and 1 on the right. So this is just the integral minus the integral between 0 and plus infinity phi prime dx. OK? Well, now phi is in compactly supported. Therefore, we can integrate by parts. The contribution of phi at plus infinity is 0 because this is compactly supported. On the other hand, there is a contribution on the left extremum with the minus. And so this is just minus of minus of phi of 0. But now we recall who is phi of 0. Phi of 0 is the Dirac delta at 0 evaluated at phi. So you see, it's not so difficult once one has given the correct definition of derivative. It is clear that, uh, so, so we have proven that uh, for any test phi, th prime is equal to delta naught, and therefore this is the exercise. So the idea behind uh, the definition of distributional derivative is some, some, somehow integration by parts, essentially. 
is a way to enforce integration by parts on something which is not smooth. So really, the basis of this is the, the, the Gauss-Green theorem, if you want, huh? the divergence theorem. Okay. Now, other exercises maybe we can do, or maybe I can ask you now, well, just a small modification. Let us take a more symmetric function, which is this. So uh, uh, minus 1, 1 instead of 0, 1. This is, for instance, it is called the uh, u equal this function here. Okay. So can you tell me who is now u prime with, again, sorry, this is equal to u prime. Can you tell me now who is u prime? It's hmm? it Now you, I mean, u is minus one one. Minus one one. This is the new function. Huh? So yeah, it is the sine, because so so called the sine function. If you if it, if x is positive, the sine of x is one. If x is negative, the sine of x is minus one, plus and minus. Uh, just the name sign is this, either plus or minus. So, who, what, what do you think to be? What do you think to be this distribution under the So, the height of the jump is now twice the, the jump, the previous jump, because pre the, the previous jump was just one. Now, the height of the jump is two. I'm jumping by two instead than one. What happens at the level of the distribution under the river? It is two. Do you, everybody agrees? It's twice. Uh, it is two delta zero. If you don't, you are not. If you are not convinced, you, you redo this proof. Now there is a new term here. Because now, when you write this, you have a contribution on the negative half line, because there, u is minus one and not zero anymore. So there is another term here, which is the integral on the left half line of phi prime. Then you integrate by parts also that, also that term. And then signs are so that there is twice here. They do not cancel. So please do this at home, OK? So home. So this is interesting. Uh, there is a coefficient in front of the derivative depending on the height of the jump. Of course, we can multiply a distribution with a number. Eh? Remember, you can multiply by a number a distribution. You can multiply also by other things a distribution. But surely, you cannot usually multiply a distribution with another distribution. This you cannot. I mean, if you do this, you don't have a distribution in general. So remember, you can multiply distributions by numbers, also by other things, uh, tests. But you cannot, in general, multiply Dirac delta with the Dirac delta. You don't get any, any distribution. So anyway, this, this operation is permitted. And, uh, and the, the computation do, do you by yourself. It's, it's the same, very similar, almost the same than this. Uh, 
Uh, maybe another exercise. Take u of x equal x. Hmm? Then what do you think that we have u prime of x? Again, again I am using uh, abuse of notation. The, the claim, the, I mean the conjecture is this, in the prime. Therefore, if this is true, if this is true, huh, the second derivative of u is twice the Dirac, in the sense of distribution, is twice the Dirac delta. You see? Because the first derivative is this, the second derivative is the derivative of the sine. We have already seen that the derivative of the sine is twice the Dirac delta. Okay, so if this is true, we can actually differentiate twice such a function, which is Lipschitz, but not C1, of course. And we end up with uh, this, this kind of results. Now, it is almost clear that if there is a candidate uh, then this should be true because you see out of the out of the singularity if I localize out of the singularity the derivative here the function is actually smooth and therefore we know that the derivative must coincide with uh, with the classical derivative so minus one on the left and plus one on the right hmm? so if there is a distribution here there's it is something that Essentially, point twice is plus one on the right and minus one on the left. However, there is a singularity here. So here there is a new contribution. And for the same reason, I mean, this, uh, one expect somehow something, when we differentiate here, something, and the, the, the test is supported here, I should have zero. When the test is supported here, I should have zero. But when the test is support here, I cannot have zero. On the other hand, and, and the result is the Dirac delta here. Um, so, well, we have to compute to see whether we, so what do we have to do? So take TU prime against the test, okay? By definition, we know that this is this, phi prime, okay. Now, T u is, in one lo uh, u is in, in L1 log, so minus integral over R, u of x, uh, sorry, yes, u of x, phi prime of x, dx, which is therefore, by definition, equal to minus absolute value of x, phi prime of x, dx. Okay? And then it is better, now we want to use integration by parts, so it is better to, so this is a Lebesgue integral, so we can split. So the origin is actually not important in this integral. I can, uh, I can neglect the origin, so I can integrate on the uh, left, half open left, open, uh, half line, so the modulus of x uh, for x negative is minus x, so I have the plus here, and I have x phi prime of x, the x, and then I have a minus, sorry, and then I have the, 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 the integral on the right, uh, have open half line, uh, again x phi prime, so check the, the signs, please, because if I make a mistake of the signs, then I don't reach the Conclusion. Now it is clear the strategy is always the same. So uh, in this case, I still do a com an integration by parts. Since phi is compactly support, I don't have any contribution at minus infinity, but I surely have a contribution at zero, which is the interesting. So, 
So this means that I have the integral minus the integral minus infinity and zero phi of x because I put the derivative on x, therefore which is one here, and I change sign. And then I have plus, I think I have uh, uh, zero. Hmm? Because I have x phi of x, zero minus infinity, hmm? which is zero. Okay? And then I have this, so now I again integrate by parts, so I have this, and I have minus x phi of x, which is still equal to zero. So what do I see? Well, I simply see that this is nothing else that sine of x, phi of x, x. Okay? So let me make a small <coughs> comment here related to the uh, so let some uh, a alpha, the alpha, be a differential operator, a little bit formal. And at this level is not so important. Differential operator with constant coefficients, a alpha. So we call, uh, and let t be a distribution. So this is a constant yeah, differential operator with constant, constant maybe complex coefficients, but we have work over the reals, so for us maybe it is better to take real coefficients. And let d be a distribution. Then we say that t is, the, is, a, is a fundamental solution for this operator. So let me call this operator P, fundamental solution for P if P applied to T is equal to delta naught. Okay? What we have seen up to now is the following, is that uh, D, sorry, H prime is equal to delta naught. Huh? So this is this H huh, is the first example of fundamental solution of a differential operator with constant coefficients. The, the, the differential operator is just the first derivative in one dimension in this case. So just one dimension, just one derivative. The, the, the operator is pu equal u prime. Hmm? Is it clear? So p, p applied to a function u is just u prime, one dimension, just one derivative. Uh, pt equal delta naught. So you see, so h is that distribution which is the fundamental, a fundamental solution, the fundamental solution for U, uh, the operator PU equal U prime. So this is the first example of fundamental solution. They are called fundamental solution because they are really fundamental. So we will see in a moment other examples. Okay. Okay, so exercise, 
still on distributional derivative. So take n equal to 3. And take u of x equal 1 over norm of x hmm? for any x in the open set omega which is uh, this compute minus Laplacian of u in the prime Okay, minus Laplacian of u in the prime. Okay. Uh, actually, we will see that we will see that there is a constant uh, claim. There is a constant c such that uh, minus this constant times the Laplace of u is equal to delta naught. So I am abusing notation everywhere here, you see. This would be Tu, and this would be Tu. Huh? So let, let me just, this is quite common. I mean, uh, we know that uh, L1 log embeds injectively in D prime. So in place of, in place of Tu, I just write U. Okay, just, just, so please me allow, allow me to do this. If you want to be precise, write TU everywhere. Okay, if you want to be precise, write, uh, sorry, a plus of TU. Here. Okay, is this clear? Hmm? So if this is true, it means that the Newtonian potential in three dimension is another example of fundamental solution for which kind of partial differential operator, the Laplace, minus Laplacian. Huh? And I hope that at this moment you will recognize that we have already studied such a kind of function. Actually, we have studied, remember, something like log of x times some constant in two dimensions and one over x to the n minus two times some other constant in n dimensions larger than two. So in three dimensions, this is this. And what we saw several weeks ago was that uh, th these are examples of harmonic functions out of the origin. Hmm? So it is not bad. I mean, this equality is not so bad because this says that essentially, if I could roughly, out of the origin, the Laplace of u is zero. At the origin, no. I cannot really do this because this is not a function. So I cannot say that at a point outside the origin, this is zero. I cannot write, this is, this is not, this is not uh, possible. Hmm? But morally, <laughs> Uh, morally, this says that uh, this function is uh, harmonic out of the origin. At the origin, there is a singularity. So the first uh, thing that you have to check is that this is in L1 log, so that Tu is well defined. Hmm? So to check, well, we have already done these computations, but it is better to repeat. So if I have one over rho, then uh, I have uh, rho square, eh? which is the Jacobian of the change of variables in spheric coordinates. And I see that that is integrable in one log. Locally integrable, I mean, this is uh, rho, like rho. So on a compact set, it is integrable. Okay. Huh? So uh, u is in L1 log. And also, actually, 
there is uh, there is no no uh, we could also write uh, here omega equal to the whole of r3 again if we want to define this almost everywhere so we can define this almost everywhere on r3 and everything can be written here in r3 in place of omega okay hmm? so actually maybe it is uh, i can put here 3 r3 Hmm? It, is, it is better to, to put here R3. On the other hand, this is defined up to one point, so almost everywhere in R3. So actually here, omega is not really necessary, okay? Okay, so compute. So the, the exercise consists in doing this. Well, we have understood how to do such a kind of exercise. Now we have to see... Uh, what do we have to do? So, uh, so let me compute minus Laplace of u against any test. So take a test in v over 3. Hmm? So take any test in the uh, over 3, r3, and compute this. Hmm? So, if I have a distribution, the Laplacian of a distribution applied to phi, do you agree with this? Do you agree with this? It is clear because now there is not the minus anymore because minus times minus is plus. So actually, we, we simply have u applied to Laplace of phi, okay? So please correct here R3, R3, everywhere R3, eh? Just only here if you want, okay? So everywhere here is R3. Okay, so now, uh, this is, sorry for this uh, abuse of notation. This is a little bit strange. You apply to Laplace of phi. If we want to go back to the old notation, we have minus Tu of Laplace of phi, which is maybe more clear. And so we can write here minus the integral over R3 of U Laplace of phi dx. Okay? So now U is in L1 log of R3. Laplace of phi is smooth, compactly supported. So this is minus the limit uh, as epsilon goes to zero. So this is actually an integral of a compact set, okay, at the end. Uh, not only that, but it is also the limit of, uh, say, minus the integral of out of the ball of the same quantity. Hmm? Why is this so? Well, this is maybe um, the dominated convergence theorem of whatever you want. Okay? No, no, the, the minus is here. So, minus is here. Okay. I was, I was starting with this minus, so let me check if I'm correct. Minus, minus, see, I think, yes, it's okay, no? I'm starting from the minus from the beginning, so. Okay, so apparently the minus is correct, and so this is just the inter, so this is the compact set containing the support of Laplace, Laplace of phi. This is the origin. So what I'm doing exactly is the integral in this region. Actually, the integral is, is there, okay? So this is k. This is, uh, well, out of the small ball of radius epsilon, centered at the origin, this, 
Okay? And now we can do integration by parts. And we have to remember the second Green's identity, I think. So So we are slowly coming back to partial differential equations, as you can see. Unfortunately, uh, the, the time is, <laughs> this is the penultimate lecture, so we cannot do really anything, but this would be just the beginning of the real theory of PD. So do you, if you re, can you remember the um, U Laplace of V minus V Laplace of U? Can you remember this formula? Now I'm not writing the conditions on omega, v, u, v, and so on. So do you remember which, which is the formula? U? What do we have here? U? Some normal derivatives. I don't remember the notation. On the, huh? this was the notation new, okay. The u, the new, okay. So this is the normal derivative, and new is exterior, right? Exterior to omega uh, and uh, unit length. So now. We have an exterior unit normal, so we have now our new will be something like this exterior to our domain. Okay? Three dimensions. So, uh, so now we apply uh, that, uh, that Green's identity there. Huh? To, to this so with uh, uh, phi in place of u. Hmm? So we have minus the limit as epsilon goes to zero plus, sorry, here plus, here. And so what do we have? Is equal to our domain. So our domain omega is just, uh, so this is omega. smooth with uh, bounded and so on. So x larger or equal than epsilon with Laplace of phi u times u dx. And then I have the integral over. Now, again, we have already seen this. There are no contributions on the exterior boundary because phi is compactly supported. So all that we have are the um, uh, is our contribution on the boundary of the ball. Hmm? Okay. So we have u d phi over d nu minus v, uh, sorry, phi d u over d nu. dh2 and the limit is outside everything so there is a big parenthesis here hmm? sorry uh, here is Laplace of u and phi yeah, sorry sorry Laplace of u phi Do you agree with this? Yes. Okay. So we have this equality. Now what do we do? G give me some hint to continue the proof. The first integral is zero. Okay. Now, u is smooth out of the origin. So in particular, it's smooth in omega and is harmonic in omega. So u is harmonic in this annular region with Laplacian pointwise defined identically equal to zero. Hmm? So we surely have this. 
therefore, um, now let me continue here maybe. So this is equal minus limit. So the minus, let me put the minus inside. So I have the integral x equal epsilon phi du over the knee dh2 minus the integral x equal epsilon u the phi over the new dh2. Hmm? Okay. Now, and the limit is outside. Now, there is a term which is easily seen to be infinitesimal. Among these two, there is one term which is easily seen to be infinitesimal. Maybe it's the second one, because you see, this is 1 over rho, 1 over epsilon, right? This is a constant. Then I have the area of the sphere, which is epsilon square, right? So comment, the second, so let me, co let me call this 2, 2 epsilon, 2 epsilon is less than or equal than what? Well, the L infinity norm of the gradient of phi, which is a number independent of epsilon. Hmm? Then I have uh, u, which is one over modulus of x, but um, there is one is x is epsilon, the modulus of x is epsilon, therefore u is integrated there is just one over epsilon. So what remains here is 4 pi epsilon square. And you see that this is O of epsilon, which goes to 0. Hmm? So actually, our computation says that the only term that we have to take into account is the first one. So this is just the limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus of this surface integral here, phi du over the limit. And if computations are correct, this limit should give us phi of 0. Hmm? Uh, up to a constant, sorry. 5, 0 up to the constant. So what do we do? Now we have to compute. So u of x is 1 over x. Huh? So the gradient of u of x is what? Is minus x to the minus 2, x over norm of x, right? So this is minus x over x to the 3. This is minus 1 of this is minus 1 homogeneous and therefore the gradient should be minus 2 homogeneous. Okay? So this this is this is should be correct. Now the normal the exterior normal is because now exterior to our annular region means pointing toward the origin. Okay, so there is a minus in front. It is minus x over the norm of x. Huh? This is our, our unit normal. So what do we have at the end? So this is the limit. Sorry, I need more space. So you see, this is the limit as epsilon goes to 0. 
then I have this phi of x. Now the scalar product between and there is a there is a minus there, but there is also another minus here. So minus against minus is a plus. Are you following? So and so I have x over epsilon. This is new. Actually, this is minus u. And then another minus, so x over epsilon cube. Okay, scalar product. Dh2. And then things arrange perfectly well because this is actually x square, which is again epsilon square. So what remains here is, here is 1 over epsilon square. You see, uh, in the, at the numerator we have epsilon square. At the denominator we are epsilon to the 4. So what remains is epsilon square at the denominator. Hmm? So this is equal to the limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus. So 1 over epsilon square, the integral on the surface of the ball, phi x dx. Now, the argument is a sort of mean value theorem. Essentially, phi is smooth. So you multiply, you take the mean value. So you just multiply and divide by 4 pi. Hmm? which is the area of the surface, 4 pi. So I have the mean value of, the, the, the mean value of phi on the surface of the sphere of radius epsilon multiplies by a constant 4 pi. And by continuity, as epsilon goes to 0, this converges to, va, to phi at the center of the sphere. So this, the, this limit is exactly phi of 0, multiplied by 4 pi. Which is, of course, 4 pi delta 0 applied to phi. So what we have shown, we have also found the constant. And so maybe now for you is much more clear the meaning of this normalization constants. We, it was also clear at the beginning of the course, but so we, had sh we have shown that minus 1 over 4 pi Laplace of u is equal to delta naught in three dimensions. So the Newtonian potential, 1 over norm of x in three dimensions, if you multiply it by uh, 1 over 4 pi, which was, I think, the constant. Uh, you have to check that this is C3, huh? the constant that we have considered at the beginning of the lecture, but probably it is so. And so we have found another fundamental solution. This is called the fundamental solution from the Laplace equation in three dimensions. So for the moment, and we have seen also the importance of such a function, the Newtonian potential in three dimensions. So uh, for the moment, we have just two examples of fundamental solution. One is the heavy side, and the other one is this in three dimensions. So homework you should do. So home. But this kind of computation, actually, we have already done at the beginning of the course. But anyway. You can imagine which is the exercise. So, uh, home, check that. I don't remember the, the symbol that we used for, for the function 1 over modulus to the x to the n minus 2. Maybe it was capital phi. I don't remember at all. I don't remember, sorry, but. Uh, log some constant C2 uh, in two dimensions and uh, Cn 
1 to the x n minus I don't, I don't remember now the symbols that uh, I have used I'm sorry if you can find in the in the in your notes let me know check that this with the correct constant so if you, if you can go back to our notation our fundamental solution hmm? a small phi so like like a test <laughs> so uh, this phi is better than small phi small by, but but also the constants can you so this is so I'm sorry. This, if I if I write small phi, then it seems a test. So in this context, we cannot use small phi. And this was something one over n omega n uh, time. Time. Ah yes. Yes. N minus two. So check the sorry n omega n times n minus two. Check this our fundamental solutions of the operator with constant coefficient second order operator minus Laplacian. Hmm? Finally, the last exercise of today Fine, last exercise. Uh, hoping that I'm using the, the usual notation. I don't know, I don't remember. So consider the following function U of T, um, capital Phi of Tx equal to 1 over 4 pi t n over 2 e to the minus if x is in our n t is bigger than 0 and then 0 say if t is less than 0 so this is the heat kernel the standard heat kernel ok so now uh, show that uh, d over dt minus Laplace of phi is equal to delta 0 in d prime. Capital phi. If this is true, Still, we have another example of fundamental solution. Now for a different operator, this constant coefficient operator, which is the heat equation, the heat, heat, heat operator, heat operator. Okay. So this. Uh, we have, I think, already seen that uh, capital Phi is in L1 log of time space. So, this I think we have already seen. Actually, we have also seen that uh, on a time slice, Phi of Tx dx is equal to 1. I think that we have seen this normalization for any positive t. So from this, for any t. So if you integrate over, over Rn. 
so from this it is clear that this is L1 log even more than one log okay okay so so in this sense we can consider again abuse of notation this would be you have to understand this as T capital Phi huh? this symbol here again you have to understand as since this is L1 log this is a distribution as usual hmm? so what do we have to do now to, to well, what do we have to do is the following so against any so given a test in D R times R N we have to compute this. Sorry for the notation where there is capital phi, small phi everywhere. I'm sorry. Okay? Okay. Now, what is this? Now, by definition, this is minus T capital phi of what? of so let me do it uh, separately so d over dt t phi capital phi is by definition minus minus uh, t phi d over this okay this is the first object then i have minus laplacian of t capital phi applied to phi is equal minus t capital phi to the plus of phi. So I think that I am not wrong if now I write the following. Hmm? I think that I am not wrong, right? Please check the sign. In particular, check this, this plus. Okay? So, well, this is equal to what? Well, this is equal to the integral over this. There is a minus. Then, the, then I have capital Phi of Tx capital Phi of Tx uh, d Phi over dt plus la plus of Phi dt dx okay so actually now we remember the expression of capital phi which is zero for negative times so actually this is the integral over positive times uh, I erase everything. Phi of capital capital phi tx d phi over dt plus the plus of phi dt dx hmm? phi is a function of small phi is a function of t and x yes by, by t bigger or equal than zero I mean the set of all tx such that t is bigger 
it is true. This is an n plus one dimensional integral. Okay. This is just an abbreviation to denote the in time space. This is t. This is x. This is okay. Now, uh, well, you can already imagine what what do, what would you do here. What would you do? Oh, uh, that is, I mean, this plus this. My, uh, may, well, you have to remember that at some moment you have to use that capital phi is, satisfies the heat equation out, out of the all for positive times. See. So maybe what I would do is the following. You see, let us try this. Maybe so f a small phi is compactly supported. So this integral actually is an integral somewhere in this region. Hmm? And the function is in L1 log. Therefore, if now I take, say, sort of, uh, of small epsilon here. And if this is epsilon, I can take the limit as epsilon goes to 0 of t larger than, it, than equal to epsilon. So minus limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus t larger than epsilon, say, of uh, capital phi dx d phi dt plus the plus phi dt dx. Hmm? Do you agree? So I, I'm some, again, the, the principle is always the same. You have a singularity somewhere. And then you enlarge a little bit the domain and you go, you integrate a little bit far from the singularity and then you let uh, epsilon goes to zero. Let go to, go to go to zero. So, of course, we need um, some theorem uh, passage to the limit under the integral sign here. So now what, what do we do? Now I think that we have to <coughs> minus limit. Now we remember that there is a double integral. So actually, it is an integral on the support of, but doesn't matter. So t bigger than epsilon. So now, sorry, OK, from epsilon plus infinity. Uh, phi d phi over dt uh, plus dt dx plus the integral from epsilon to plus infinity integral over rn capital phi laplace of phi dx dt. And we have this. Hmm? Maybe this was maybe this was your your comment to to split into two. More or less was your comment, I think, right? Now we can integrate by parts the, the first with respect to time. Okay? So the, our first integral, so this is equal to minus the limit as epsilon to, goes to 0 plus. Now, then I put derivative here, and but I have a contribution at 0, at, at epsilon, sorry. OK? So this must be minus integral over Rn, integral 
from epsilon to plus infinity d phi capital phi over dt small phi dt dx plus double integral uh, min there is a minus here so please be careful so there is a plus here and then we have integral over Rn integral over from epsilon to plus infinity then what do I have I have capital phi capital phi phi from plus infinity epsilon dx hmm? is it okay up to now so this is just integration by parts in one dimension in, in the first coordinate so let me check once more I, I have a minus here and then the plus and then the boundary contributions and then I have to integrate by parts also this one uh, Okay, so but let us first, so, so, so the, then there is, okay, then there is this, and here we have the, the, the identity that we know, but there are no contributions, huh? so integral from x plus infinity, integral over n, Laplace of phi, phi, plus nothing, I think, uh, plus nothing, if I'm not wrong, okay, dx dt, let me check that I'm doing well, maybe I am forgetting something mm. Mm. There is nothing, no, no other contribution, I think, here because the Laplace of phi, capital phi, integral over Rn. There is no other contribution, I think. Also because, uh, in any case, there is no contribution. The gradient of phi with respect to x is always orthogonal to the time direction. So I think that this is okay. So there are no other contributions, hopefully. Now, there is a minus in front here and the plus here. So we know that uh, uh, this sum up to zero huh? because capital phi solves the heat equation on this region this is, solves the heat equation so we have that here d over dt if you want minus this plus Laplace of phi is equal to zero in this region so minus this the minus in front plus this they add they you can add together and that this is equal to zero okay hmm? therefore what remains now let, let us be careful with the sign there is a minus here 
nothing there. And so it seems that there is a minus limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus integral over Rn capital phi of epsilon. Uh. Now, take the contribution at infinity here. There is nothing because small phi is compactly supported also in time, clearly. And so this is just contribution at, times epsilon, at time epsilon, so with the minus in front. So what there is this minus cancels and there is a plus. So phi epsilon x, phi epsilon x dx. OK. Uh, phi epsilon x, uh, OK. So the claim is this. This must be equal to phi of 0, 0. Now to do this, I think that we should change variable. Hmm? Is this phi is equal to 0 or phi is 0? Time space. Hmm? That zero is real, and this is this zero is a vector, time and space. Okay, the change of variable. Now, uh, let us look who is capital phi of ep at times epsilon. Time epsilon is equal to one over four pi epsilon to the n over two. So uh, I think that for for epsilon, sorry. I think that uh, we have to change variable as usual x over square root of epsilon equal y. Hmm? x over square root of epsilon. This should be the correct, the correct change of variable. And uh, when you do this, uh, so that this becomes e to the minus y square over, should divide by 2. You are right. Because, yes, yes, you are right. Or, or we end up with e to the minus y square over 4. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I have done this. So that at the end you have... So that phi at epsilon x, what does it become? It becomes capital phi. It, it becomes uh, it becomes one over four pi epsilon to the n over two e to the minus y square over four. Huh? with this change of variable phi, uh, epsilon, epsilon square root of epsilon y hmm? with this change of variable. So if I now do this change of variable, I have the limit as epsilon goes to 0 plus, the integral over Rn, then I have, uh, I have put a, a square root of, uh, of epsilon times y there. So I have 1 over 4 pi epsilon to the n over 2. And then I have the integral over Rn. Then I have uh, e to the minus y square over 4. Then I have phi of epsilon and then again square root of epsilon y. And then I have uh, the, the, all the epsilon should cancel because dx should cancel this. And so I have just 1 over 4 pi dy. You agree with this? And 
And so now it is uh, again another exercise to see that this should really go. So try to you by try it by yourself. You have an epsilon here, square root of epsilon here, and this is equal to five. Of course, we are using the fact that uh, this normalization, that this, this is a convolution kernel, and you just normalize to one, the integral. So this is what remains to do. Please do it by yourself. So this, is, this shows that there is another example of fundamental solution where now the Dirac delta, maybe your question was, well, so the Dirac delta in zero is Dirac delta in time space. OK? OK. So that's all.